We're actually going to dive straight into our main story tonight, which concerns voting. A practice that was once sold to youth with the slogan, vote or die. And given the state of politics right now, for the first time, I'm requesting more information on the second option. <laughs> Specifically, with the midterms now just two days away, we wanted to focus on a dangerous trend among Republican candidates, denying the legitimacy of the last election. The fake news, big tech and blue state liberals stole the election from President Trump. The 2020 election was a totally rigged election. In fact, quite frankly, every election since I think George Washington, there's been some kind of a defect in the system. You could say Biden won the presidency kind of like OJ is innocent. <laughs> I'll say this, those people are ridiculous, but they're having a really good time. <laughs> Just check out this guy. I have never been as happy as he is hearing an O.J. Simpson joke in 2021, <laughs> and I have two children. And the thing is, those people are not alone. A majority of Republican nominees for House, Senate, or key statewide offices this year deny or question the 2020 election results. And some, like this guy, deny it while trying to add a bit of spectacle. Hey, Mike Collins here, you pro-Trump America first trucker, running for Congress here in Georgia 10. Well, I understand, oh, Joe Biden was in town yesterday to talk about our elections. It seems that he and Kamala Harris called anyone who disagreed with the federal hijacking of this election a racist. Well, Joe, I got some news for you. Let me tell you what Georgians really believe. You see, Georgians are sick and tired of weak need, spineless politicians who won't fight for Trump, get to the bottom of 2020 and fix our elections. Well, if they won't do it, Mike Collins will. <laughs> Send me to Washington. OK. <laughs> Too many things to get into there. Your brain wants to focus on pro-Trump America first trucker, but then wonders, why is he dressed like the world's angriest Target employee? <laughs> before noticing, wait, is that a garbage can labelled voting machine? <laughs> then also labelled cast ballot, as if they knew that the first label wasn't convincing anyone, but thought that the second one might. <laughs> then it takes a minute to focus on the subtle but unmistakable edit point before the explosion, breaking the illusion that that was shot in a single take. Then finally, a brain says, hey, he opened with Joe Biden and Kamala Harris think I'm a racist. Did he ever close that loop or nah? <laughs> and brain... Nah. <laughs> anyway, that man is completely ridiculous, and given the district where he's running, he's almost certainly going to win on Tuesday. But it is worth dwelling on the promise that he and those other candidates are making, that they are going to fix our elections. Because that speaks to a real problem here, which is that a troubling number of election deniers are running for jobs that can play key roles in administering elections in their states. In fact, over half the country has an election denier running to oversee their elections, and many of them are expected to win. And look, we've talked before about voter suppression on this show, whether that's through voter ID laws, felony disenfranchisement, gerrymandering, or restrictions on mail-in voting. But those tactics take place before you cast your ballot. Tonight, we're going to focus on election subversion, which typically happens after the votes are in. It's a strategy to negate legitimate election results by simply refusing to accept them. Trump famously tried to subvert the last election. And some current candidates are promising that, if elected, they'll be able to guarantee a certain result in the future. Take Jim Marchand. He leads the America First Secretary of State Coalition. And if they win, he's been pretty clear about what that would mean. When my coalition of Secretary of State candidates around the country get elected, we're going to fix the whole country. And President Trump is going to be president again in 2024. Look, no wonder Trump likes that message. Also, it probably doesn't hurt that it's coming from a guy who looks like a smaller, paler version of him. <laughs> Just look at that man. He looks like the Pokemon that Trump evolves from. <laughs> so if the plan is this overt, and with potential consequences this dire for this election, the next election, and way beyond, tonight, let's talk about election subversion. And to understand what we're facing, let's revisit briefly some of the chaos following the last election. As you undoubtedly remember, after Trump's loss, he tried a lot of tactics to swing things back into his favour, including calling Brad Raffensperger, the Secretary of State of Georgia, to ask him for just a small favour. So, look, all I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 <laughs> votes, which is one more than we have, because we won the state... It's still incredible to listen to that, and a cold chill ran down my urethra, merely hearing his voice again. 
seemingly forgetting at one point both how many votes he needs and the word votes. It's genuinely amazing to listen to someone attempt a coup with the same focused energy of a dad struggling to remember his family's McDonald's order. <laughs> yeah, uh, can I get a spicy, uh, crispy, crunchy chicken and uh, two? Do you have something called Son of a Baconator here? Are you the Whopper place or are you the other one? Yeah, yeah, I'm in the wrong place, aren't I? Okay, got it. Fuck me! <laughs> now, thankfully, Raffensperger declined Trump's request, which left him to fight his battles in the courts where he lost over 60 lawsuits challenging the election results. He then famously tried at the last minute to bully Mike Pence into refusing to certify Biden's win, including a phone call where Trump called him a wimp and the P-word, which I know is supposed to be pussy, but to be honest, the P-word sounds like the phrase Geppetto's therapist uses to talk about Pinocchio. <laughs> and while I'm sure that you remember all of that, there were also smaller, much lesser known incidents where people further down the chain also tried thumbing the scale, like in Wayne County, Michigan, where Trump supporters raised bullshit claims about voting irregularities in Detroit, and a Republican member of the County Board of Canvassers there proposed this simple solution. I would be open to a motion to, to certify community voting results in the city of Detroit. That move outraged the Democrats on the board and speaker after speaker on the board's public Zoom meeting. You have extracted a black city out of a county and said the only ones that are at fault at an issue is the city of Detroit, where 80% of the people who reside here are African American. Right. I understand why he's upset there. Generally, when a white person says, I have a compromise, and starts doing electoral fractions that count black people less, those haven't been great moments for democracy. <laughs> now, that woman later claimed that she merely wanted more investigation of those Detroit votes before she'd agreed to certify them. And while, after pushback from Michigan's governor and secretary of state, she ultimately voted to certify Biden's win, after Trump called her and a fellow Republican board member, they both tried, albeit unsuccessfully, to rescind their votes. Meanwhile, a few days later, at Michigan's state canvassing board, there was a similar stalemate. Its four members were evenly split between Democrats and Republicans, one of whom refused to certify Biden's win, which meant it was all on this guy to do the right thing, which, thankfully, he did with this little speech. As John Adams once said, we are government of laws, not men. And this board needs to adhere to that principle here today. This board must do its part to uphold the rule of law and comply with our legal duty to certify this election. I will be supporting the motion. And that was it. A boring guy with glasses quoting John Adams <laughs> upheld democracy. I'm just saying, get Bradley Whitford in there and add some stirring music, and you've got the kind of scene that will make Aaron Sorkin come until he passed out. <laughs> and the thing is, those are clearly just two very local examples. But in state after state, we were very lucky that a small group of individuals in key positions stood firm. Arizona's Republican Governor Doug Ducey was literally in the middle of certifying his state's win for Biden when he got a phone call from Trump. But he put his phone aside and continued signing the paperwork. And I have to say, <laughs> watching someone screen your call is one of the most devastating things <laughs> a human being can possibly experience, and I'm so glad that it happened to Donald Trump. <laughs> so, to recap, the guardrails that protect our democracy were heavily tested in 2020. And while some major weaknesses were exposed, they thankfully held. But since then, there has been a concerted effort to attack the people and institutions that got into Trump's way, shifting the landscape in ways that could make future subversion attempts even more dangerous. Now, for one thing, the fervor around election fraud has been stubbornly persistent with a recent poll showing 61% of Republicans believe Joe Biden only won due to voter fraud. Which is just ridiculous, given that, again, there is no evidence of that. Multiple states had exhaustive recounts. This has been litigated. This just isn't one of those unknowable things that will never get resolved, like which one of the Teletubbies, when cooked properly, would taste best. <laughs> that we'll never know, will we? And I know what you're thinking. Because it's what I'm thinking, too. Should we just all say it at once? Poe. <laughs> exactly. Of course it's Poe. Every one of us is pretty sure that on a rainy day in January, absolutely nothing would taste better than some braised Poe over rice. <laughs> with some ginger? With some wine? Of course.
course, everyone's pretty sure that a Poe that simmers for an hour and a half after getting properly blanched and caramelised would melt in your mouth on that January Sunday. Yum, yum, yummity yum. But pretty sure isn't sure, isn't it? We will never definitively know because you can't eat Teletubbies. There are laws, apparently. So all we are left with is gut instinct, unlike election results, which are actually verified. Sleep with one eye open, you tasty plump clown. <laughs> or I'll have your thick salted thighs for my Christmas feast. <laughs> but the thing is, if you're not a regular consumer of conservative media, you may not realise the extent to which Biden stole the election has taken hold and on the basis of incredibly flimsy evidence, perhaps best exemplified by 2,000 Mules, a documentary from conservative bullshit artist Dinesh D'Souza, which is just wall-to-wall -wall nonsense. The 2020 elections were one of the most corrupt in history. See the proof for yourself. We tracked 2,000 mules making multiple ballot drops. 2,000 mules, the shocking new movie from Dinesh D'Souza. Philadelphia alone, we've identified more than 1,100 mules. What is a mule? person picking up ballots and running them to the drop boxes. This is not grandma out walking her dog. Bad backgrounds, bad reputation. Ooh. So intense. Mysterious handoffs in dark alleys, people with bad reputations. It's nice that we finally have an answer to the question, what if the wire was created by virgins? <laughs> the, the central idea of this movie is the claim that there were vote mules who repeatedly visited ballot boxes and deposited suspect ballots, and that Dinesh and his friends have identified them using cell phone data. And it would take the rest of this show to debunk the movie's claims point by point, but very quickly, there is no way by just using cell phone data to know whether someone visited a drop box or was just in the vicinity of one, particularly since those boxes were installed in high traffic areas. Meanwhile, the only map that seems to show someone driving around dumping ballots is fake, and another map supposedly showing a drop box site is actually a stock photo of Moscow, <laughs> with a third one just the same Moscow map again, but rotated 90 <laughs> degrees. And finally, the whole theory rests on these mules repeatedly going to multiple drop boxes. But while they show lots of footage of drop boxes within the movie, none of them show the same person more than once. Instead, the filmmakers breathlessly scrutinise footage for clues that they claim, with zero proof, are evidence of crime, including voters wearing gloves, you know, during a pandemic, or taking photos as they deposit their ballots. I'm going to show you a full minute from the movie where they work themselves up over absolutely nothing. OK, the next one. Yeah, so let me show you Dog Guy. So Dog Guy, middle of the day, this is actually at a polling place. So the people in line are waiting to go in and vote early. They're doing it the right way. OK, now, now you've got some other people going to walk up. This lady doesn't care, but this guy, this next guy cares. He's watching the whole thing. The so guy looks up, talks to him. Got the ballots under his arm already. Now he's got the rest that he pulled out of the bag. And he's going to get his camera ready to take the pictures as he puts them in there. If you consider the brazenness of this, right? This is the middle of the day. There's people sitting there watching you cheat. But people I'm... that are doing it the right way. But it's difficult for them to know what to do, That's right. except right. observe and maybe say, what's going on That's here? What right. did I just see? They wonder. What does this all even mean if this is happening in broad daylight and nobody is doing anything to stop it? <laughs> but that's not damning evidence. That is fully not anything. It's just someone voting. <laughs> and we need to be absolutely clear on something here. The guy in line that they're talking about, who's supposedly shocked about the voter fraud that he's witnessing, he's looking at the dog, <laughs> as anybody would. The only reason I can focus on what's going on there right now is because, thankfully, they blurred that dog. <laughs> Otherwise, I, like him, would be gawking at it and asking, who's a good boy, until the polls closed? <laughs> this movie is astonishingly dumb, but it has a real following. At least 50 candidates have promoted or cited it, and it and conspiracy theories like it have contributed to what's been called a sea of pervasive distrust, with deniers now channelling that distrust to burrow into every level of the election process. Take the very lowest one. 
precincts. They're small, neighbourhood-level units centred around polling places. Uh, political parties organise in precincts and local governments hire and recruit poll workers there. Trump's allies have been working extremely hard to make sure that they are well represented at that level, particularly Steve Bannon, pictured here, drowned, <laughs> who has made his precinct strategy a constant refrain. What we need right now, the way the Republican Party is structured, is that you can go to a precinct, become a precinct committee man, and then you've, got real, then you've got real standing. We're building an army of the awakened, and we are taking over uh, precinct strategies, we're taking over election boards, canvassing boards, we're flooding the zone with poll workers, poll watchers, election judges, people in the room. It's going to be MAGA in the room counting the votes, because only MAGA can count fair. OK, OK, <laughs> set aside. Only MAGA can count fair. And just spare a moment for his room decal, which features an actual sign reading, there are no conspiracies, but there are no coincidences, a quote attributed to Stephen K. Bannon. <laughs> and while you might think that there is nothing douchier than quoting yourself, it turns out you're wrong about that. It's doing that while also slightly trying to give your name a fancy makeover. Because <laughs> Stephen K. Bannon? Oh, please, Steve. No one is buying that because we looked and the K is for Kevin. You're just <laughs> making your name even sadder. <laughs> but Bannon's strategy seems to have paid off. ProPublica found last year that in 41 key battleground counties, there are at least 8,500 new Republican precinct officers or equivalent officials with no similar surge from the Democrats. Bannon and other Republicans have also been encouraging people to take on jobs in polling stations while issuing some troubling advice. At one training session for poll workers and watchers in Michigan run by a Republican activist group, participants were told to call 911 and contact sheriffs to involve law enforcement in any election-related complaints, which isn't great, is it? You should clearly only call 911 with an actual emergency, like, you know, a car accident or a break-in or, or when someone takes off their shoes and socks on a plane. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I know we're in the sky, but I'm asking you to get a police helicopter and shoot us down. <laughs> and if you're thinking that election supervisors won't stand for shenanigans like that, you should know many have been driven away. One investigation found that in five highly contested battleground states, roughly one in three top election administrators left the job after the 2020 election. And when you consider the kind of personal messages that some received last time, you do understand why they may not want to do it again. This election is effing rigged. You all know it, and you are complicit as if. You lied. You're a traitor. Perhaps cuts and bullets will soon arrive, gave my address. Eric, 234 years ago, the founding Caucasian Fathers of America gave us the Second Amendment. Time's running out, Richard. We're coming after you and every motherfucker that stole this election with our Second Amendment. Subpoenas be damned. You're gonna be served lead, you fucking, fucking animal, enemy communist Holy shit, those messages are horrifying. And by the way, founding Caucasian fathers is just one hell of a phrase. <laughs> because it either comes from the mouth of a racist or someone with strong opinions on the casting decisions in Hamilton <laughs> because they are a racist. Reuters actually identified more than 900 threats made against election administrators since the last election, so it is no wonder so many qualified people are leaving. And their replacements are sometimes troubling. Take Nye County, Nevada, where their top county election official was replaced by this guy, Mark Kumpf, who not only said that he believes Trump won the 2020 election, he's also promoted 2,000 mules and has amplified some of the baseless hysteria around Dominion voting machines. And look, we have addressed voting machines before on this show. They do have some vulnerabilities, but importantly, those vulnerabilities can be counteracted by having a physical paper trail and doing risk-limiting audits after the fact. Also, there is no proof that any machines have ever been compromised in a US election. But Kampf defends election deniers strongly, and he will not budge on it when pressed. If you don't believe the system was legitimate in 2020 and created an error where 30,000-plus votes were not counted in the state correctly, isn't that problematic? I don't see it as being problematic at all because I'm trying to increase voter confidence in the election. In the election space, the machines that count go through multiple layers of security. They are not connected to the Internet. And this is regulated throughout the country. That's, that's a perspective. 
There are a lot of people, again, the voters in this county don't believe that. And whether it's true or not, their perception is their reality. Wow! <laughs> Whether it's true or not, their perception is their reality. I've got to say, that is a risky stance for a guy whose name is almost Mein Kampf. <laughs> Again, it's literally not. But I've seen his name written down hundreds of times while working on this piece, and every single time, my brain autocorrects it to Mein Kampf, and eventually, my perception will become reality. <laughs> I'm just saying, if my last name were Kampf, I definitely wouldn't give my baby a four-letter name that starts with an M. It'd be, it'd be like meeting someone named Earl Harbour or Holly Korst. It feels like their parents just went out of their way to fuck with them and all of us. Kampf has suggested that all ballots should now be hand-counted. But experts will tell you that while hand-counting is an important tool in recounts and audits as a way of verifying the machine count, tallying entire elections by hand would cause chaos and make results less accurate, not more. And sure enough, early voting in that county has been a spectacular mess, with the AP observing two groups of five people spending about three hours each counting just 50 ballots, with mismatched tallies leading to recounts and occasionally more recounts, and one volunteer lamenting, I can't believe it's taking two hours to get through 25 ballots. And yeah, if only there was a fucking machine that could help you guys with that. <laughs> and, and that is just one election denier at a low level wreaking havoc. We could be in for a lot worse. Just look at Arizona, a state that Biden won by an extremely narrow margin. But thanks to their then governor doing one of the most brutal call screenings of all time, <laughs> things didn't go off the rails. But he is on his way out now. And the Republican nominee to replace him is running ads like this. Hi, Arizona. I'm Carrie Lake, the Trump-endorsed candidate for governor. If you're watching this ad right now, it means you're in the middle of watching a fake news program. You know how to know it's fake? Because they won't even cover the biggest story out there, the rigged election of 2020. OK, except every bit of that is wrong. The election was not rigged, and the news did cover both the recounts and the lawsuits. Plus, if you just saw that ad for the first time on this show, you're clearly not watching it on a fake news program. You're watching it because you left the TV on after the White Lotus. That is what is happening right now. <laughs> and that ad, which includes footage from 2000 Mules, by the way, is actually tame compared to some of the other things that Lake has said, because she's called for the imprisonment of the current Secretary of State and said that if she didn't win her primary, it'd be because there's some cheating going on, and then, after winning it, insisted her supporters had simply outvoted the fraud. Which is basically, if I lose, it's rigged, if I win, it's fine. Meaning that she's approaching elections with the same objectivity and nuance of a five-year-old inventing a game in real time. <laughs> the rules are simple. Whoever has the most tokens wins. Unless you have the most tokens, then it's who can hold their breath the longest. Unless you can, then it's a jumping contest. <laughs> But it gets worse for Arizona because the Republican nominee for Secretary of State there is Mark Fincham, who, as you can see, wakes up every day to cosplay as a cowboy accountant. <laughs> and he seems pretty unlikely to willingly certify a Democratic win in his state, given that he said this. Would you ever accept that a Democrat could win Arizona, or, or do you just not think that's possible? I have a hard time believing that's possible. Everywhere I go, the vast majority of people uh, still show support for President Trump. And but that might that... just be because you are going to places <laughs> where there are supporters of Donald Trump. Is there any chance a Democratic candidate for president can win Arizona in 2024? No, no, no! <laughs> OK. I, I genuinely don't know what's more annoying there. The fact that he answered a legitimate question with a prop or that he apparently tells people no so often he needed a special fun button for it. <laughs> Although between that, his talking Trump doll and his novelty desk sign, it's slightly heartwarming to know that a Spencer's Gifts in Arizona is staying afloat thanks to the compulsive purchases of one supremely weird individual. <laughs> But the thing is, Quiet Earp over there has openly told supporters in a fundraising email that if he had been in power in 2020, we would have won, plain and simple. And in a debate, he even brainstormed one scenario of how that could have happened. Knowing what we know today, there are certain counties that should have been set aside as irredeemably compromised. Maricopa County was one of them. Yuma County was one of them. We have 
so many votes outside of the law that it, it begs the question, what do we do with an election where we have votes that are in the stream but should not be counted? If you can't find the individual who is engaged in that behavior, perhaps that county has had a defective election. Yeah, he just laid his plan out in front of everybody. Step one, identify two large counties which, if removed from the count, would hand the election to Trump. Step two, remove them from the count. <laughs> now, is that a conspiracy to steal the election? Well, as we now know, there are no conspiracies, but there are also no coincidences <laughs> in the famous words of one Stephen Kevin Bannon. <laughs> and here is the thing. Any one of the people that you've seen so far would be bad in the wake of an election, but in combination, things could get really rough because there are protections against one rogue official refusing to sign off on an election. They could be sued, and if they refuse, uh, they could be held in contempt of court. But experts warn that the ability of a governor or secretary of state to reject certification are significantly enhanced if others up and down the chain are of a similar mind. And to understand a potential worst-case scenario here, let's put some of the people that you've seen tonight into a chain. Let's start with partisan poll workers, inspired by Steve Bannon, deciding that they've seen something fishy and calling 911. They then kick their claims up to a county clerk, like this guy, who's maybe willing to amplify a perception that's not a reality. That raises enough of a stink that people at the county board of canvassers or the state board refuse to sign off on the results. And then the Secretary of State takes their side, refusing to certify the results or even arguing that the results from certain counties are so flawed that the county's election has failed and therefore cannot be counted. Now, in that scenario, experts say a Republican state legislature could point to supposed irregularities in the conduct of the election and choose their own slate of electors to deliver a different result. And at this point, the law is a little fuzzy on what could happen next, because under the Electoral Count Act of 1887, if the state sends two rival slates of electors and the House and the Senate disagree on which one is valid, the one sent by the state's governor gets counted, which could be this person. Now, there would undoubtedly be lawsuits and maybe the Supreme Court would step in, but also, you know, Seeing as one of the justices has a wife who was part of the last attempted coup, <laughs> maybe not. And I know this all sounds dramatic, and I do not want to be too alarmist. I don't mean to sound like Chicken Little here. I mean, I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't mean to look like him either, but some <laughs> things are just out of our hands, aren't they? Because the odds of Carrie Lake unilaterally picking our next president are thankfully slim. But the odds of her and others like her being able to create a complete mess are significantly higher. Because everything that we've talked about tonight has the capacity to overwhelm our system, making it harder to certify elections quickly, leading to confusion, which sows doubt in the process, and in turn causes absolute chaos, which is very worrying, given that we've all seen what confused but motivated people are capable of doing when they think the process is broken. And we may not have to wait until 2024 to see that chaos unfold, as the midterms themselves are turning into a clusterfuck. Vigilantes are already turning up as unofficial poll watchers at voting drop boxes. Meanwhile, some very prominent voices on the right have been priming people to contest any result on Tuesday that is not a Republican win. The Democratic Party has such contempt for voters and for democracy itself, and so much confidence in its ownership of the media and of big tech, that it no longer has to try to win your votes. They can even run mentally defective candidates who can barely speak and not only expect them to win, but expect you to accept the outcome no matter how transparently absurd it is. Look, I get that at this point, Tucker Carlson is basically Coco Melon for bigots, but that is gross <laughs> even for him. From calling a stroke victim mentally defective to putting win in heavy quotation marks. And for the record, one of the big clues that these conspiracy theories are bullshit is that so many of them are predicated on the belief that the Democratic Party is well organized. Who on earth <laughs> is stupid enough to buy that bullshit? <laughs> so, so what can we do here? Well, there are some obvious steps that we should take. On the federal level, we absolutely have to fix the Electoral Count Act, the law whose vagueness allows for a lot of the fuckery that I've just described. Both the House and the Senate actually have bills that have bipartisan support and would, among other things, close the failed election loophole that might allow a partisan governor or state legislature to send whatever electors they choose. 
even Mitch McConnell has supported the Senate version, so it actually might have a chance to pass. That is the one piece of good news in this entire piece, so I strongly suggest that you savour it. <laughs> but, but that is clearly not enough. Long term, we still need comprehensive voting rights reform, which is something we need to prioritise and fight for. But the first step, and I know this is going to be infuriating to hear, is for you to vote. We've talked a lot about how part of the reason that Biden's victory wasn't stolen from him was thanks to the diligent work of a few people in key positions. But don't forget that the first part of why that was possible is that a lot of people fucking voted. A and I get how ludicrous it sounds for someone to say, fix these significant roadblocks, keeping your vote from counting by voting. I hear it, I promise I do. Particularly if you're a member of one of the many communities like black voters, the disabled, the formerly incarcerated and low income communities who have long been sounding the alarm about all of this shit. And voting is not going to be enough on its own at every level of the process. We need people to show the same level of enthusiasm for preserving our democracy that others are demonstrating for dismantling it. And I am not saying it's going to be easy to match the energy of people fueled by bullshit documentaries, flat-out lies, and the occasional exploding trash can. <laughs> but it is really important to try. And to that end, we actually have a message that we'd like you to hear. Hey, Nick Offerman here. <laughs> Actor, author, woodworker, and a man who can actually pull off a short sleeve polo shirt without looking like my mommy picked it out for me. <laughs> and this is a trash can. I've labeled it trash can because it is a trash can. I actually labeled it twice so there won't be any mix-ups. But obviously that's unnecessary because we're all adults who do know the difference between a trash can and a goddamn voting machine. Far-right Republican extremists have been running their dry mouths, claiming that any election in which they receive less votes than the opposition must be rigged. Well, I've got some news for you. Actual patriots are sick and tired of shameless opportunistic charlatans who invent dangerous conspiracies, peddle mendacious propaganda, and worse, censor good, good dogs. Because if you're afraid to show a dog's face, by God, I'm not. There. Oh, you that good boy. You can't stop us from showing dogs just like you can't stop us from voting. We're going to do it, not because it's fun, because it's not really fun, but because it's the right thing to do, America. And guess what? We're going to look one fuck of a lot better than you while we do it. One shot, no cuts. <laughs> Vote. And that's our show. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Good night.